Welcome to Beyond the Press channel. Hi. Today we are going to tell how in this workshop they are making 30 kilometers of fridges every year, like commercial fridge or what is the like official term? Yeah, what you're going to use, you know, uh, when you go for the grocery store and you buy your uh, ice cream, it's coming from the place where that, what they're manu manufacturing here. Or milk or beer or meat yeah. or like all the, all, the all the cold things in the grocery stores. 30 kilometers in one year, the steel parts, sheet metal parts. And here in Finland, if you go store and take something cold, with 90% certainty, the steel parts of the cooler are made here. And, and most of it is made in Finland. Also the materials what they are using in here, and they are yeah. recyclable. So they said it's close 90 percent recycled materials what they're yeah. using in here. And when the sheet metal parts are ready, the actual fridge factory is next door. Yeah. Well, I think we are going to make yeah. also a video from there. And we already made a factory tour in Finnish for our Rauta Media, Iron Media channel. If you want full details, go check that out. It's over one hour long. <laughs> it's quite detailed. It's a lot of things. But now, like, bit shorter version for our international audience. This was the old lady. Yeah, this is the old lady. First machine in this factory. I already forgot the official term, but it's a hydraulic like puncher. Puncher. It, it punches holes on the sheet metal. And there you can see like tool changer. It's revolver type. So it has different tools for different holes. And then the hydraulics push the tool through the steel. And that makes the hole. And then there is springs on every tool that returns the tool back up. And it's quite fast. That there is a one hole. <laughs> and, For a huge piece and I found one hole. And uh, this is probably leading hole manufacturer in Finland. They make probably 100 million holes, holes in a year. In a year. Not all with <coughs> this, but quite a much. And the reason why they punch the holes and not use laser cutter is the speed. It's mm -hmm. much faster. We have also laser cutter on later on the video, so you can see the speed difference. Yeah. And uh, one interesting thing about this machine is it's really, really old. It's 20 years old, and usually they don't last this long. But with this, they have mainly doing only like very thin, like up to like four millimeters, and it can do like ten. So it's been on quite light use so far. Like all the uh, machines, what they have in here. Then uh, here is a bit of the same, but more modern and automat automatized. It has their own rack where they put all the materials and the robot is selecting um, which material and what they are manufacturing. And then there is the pallets where the end product is going and uh, it's simply uh, ready shipped. So everything is automated in this one. Yeah, and it's, it punches holes and then it can like stretch, stretch holes like this. And then it can make a threading also, so it can mm, make threaded yeah, holes. And then one thing that that didn't have is that it has a giant hydraulic guillotine, so it can also cut the pieces. So from one large sheet, you can make like, let's say, ten smaller parts with zillion holes of, on all of those, and really fast yeah. compared to laser. And it's made in Finland. Yeah, and here are the like tools, so it attaches on this end. There you can see what type of hole it's going to make. And here is the spring. And there is coming another similar, where it's the negative uh, shape to make the hole. Yeah. So always two parts in the one. Yeah. You have need to have also up and lower to for the hole. And here is the like, all the stuff that it's punched out lately. They don't have to be round holes, they can be whatever size. And For the shape. tooling, like simple hole like this, the tools cost about 1000 euros to make. So you don't want to use this if you are going to make 100 holes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite expensive. And if you have a lot of holes, you can make special tool that's going to make like nine holes in one punch. So then it's really, really fast. I think this, uh, this, this is type that you can make like maybe nine, nine holes in one, one go. Yeah. And then uh, here is the like 
thing that feeds from the guillotine, the excess material from guillotine, stuff like that. And it's, it's fun, it's like everything is of course automated, so that goes like up and down. Is it like leftovers or ready-made parts? What is that in English? It's the press break. Yeah, this yeah, is not the press break. Yeah. Yeah, That's they have, also the modern press break, what they have in here. Yeah, one, one of the press breaks have like automated tool, tool changer. You still feed the material by hand, but the tools are changed automatically. Yeah. And these are used for the smaller patches. And also if the piece is really large and it has like really simple one bend, then it's better to use this than the more automated machine that we have here on the uh, end of the hall. Actually, this is also an interesting machine. It's because, a sanding one. Yeah, because when you punch, punch holes, the other side, actually this is still sharp. So this where it comes in, it's not sharp, but where the part comes out is really sharp. And you can have this on the finished product. So they feed them through this machine. And this has this very weird, like sanding belts that remove all the sharp corners. We can show you now how it's from inside as well. Can you, can we open it? Yeah, yeah. yeah of course we can no, open course it. We can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they spin here. And one in important thing about this is, uh, yeah, let's do the phone demonstration. If you put it like this, then this doesn't get sand because it moves like this. So everything has to be like this. Angled. Yeah. And there is a normal sanding paper as well. Also with this, like a brushes. So different material, different kind of. Yeah, and they are also different like finishes. Some they need to roughen up for the paint to stick better. So mm. it can do like multiple things. And it has uh, the fume extraction, so all the dust. And this place is not cleaned for our uh, visit. So it's this clean all the time. They said, you know, the material is coming in, in a bullet. And uh, when it comes ready, it goes out. So they don't store anything in here. So it comes in and out and all the floors are clean all the time. Yeah. No leftovers or trash. And then they have laser machine. It's not running at the moment, but sometimes there is part that has like weird shaped holes and not enough to make like punching tool. So then they use just the laser or if the like outer diameter or something is like something that you can't make the tools that you saw there, then they use laser. And this is very special laser for like thin sheet metal. Uh, the main axis, they don't need to do all the movements. There's also secondary axis for just the cutting head. So like really small details. It just moves the like very tip of the thing and not the whole, whole like goddamn machine. Technical terms. And only one po uh, 0.16 millimeter uh, is the laser beam wideness. The, yeah, the width, how do you say? Yeah, width of the beam. Yeah. So same than here. Yeah. So it's very, very accurate. Yeah, and then I think this is probably uh, the last and maybe the most interesting machine. This is like highly automated press break. Oh yeah, this is press break still. Yeah, press break. Yeah. It's just highly automated. So it feeds the material in, and then there is pneumatic cylinder that's going to pinch the material. And you can, it can spin the material and feed it in. So here is, that's good example. You put the sheet metal in, and this comes out like 20 seconds later. It's really fast and it can do like the complicated turn where it's turned twice, or even turn in like different directions. Yeah. Like first up and then down. Here is some scratches. What do you think what happens for this part? It depends what, how they're going to coat it and where yeah, it goes. Yeah. But they said they are super strict about any kind of failure in the product. So t they try to keep it everything clean as possible. Yeah, because a lot of like the production goes to like grocery stores and it's visible to customers. So everything needs to like look, look really nice. And with sheet metal, if you paint it, it like it's really very visible. Especially with the black color. Yeah, what else about this machine? Yeah, it's a quite an expensive machine. Did it say like 1.5 1 million? Yeah, 1.5 million. Yeah, so it's quite expensive machine. But this does, this does all the like frames, doors, shelves. 
for all the fritzes that they make. So the 30 kilometers of the year's fritzes comes mainly from one machine. And that's yeah, like something. That's the like all the all the all the commercial fritzes in Finland. Not and also a lot lot to like Sweden, Norway and Baltics. Yeah. So it's it's crazy how much you can do with one machine when it's like fast. I think that's about Yo. it. If you wanna see like five times more details, go look the Finnish video. It has automated subtitles, so you can understand those. The uh, factory owner, Tero, is going to explain everything much better than we did here. Yeah, and more detailed. <laughs> yeah, and if you like these industrial videos, subscribe to the channel. We are going to start to do many, many more of these. I would, I would almost like to say like weekly videos. Yeah, well, that's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but hey, that is all for today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.